What's going on? It's Mr. Slips, aka Lionel Rich T, aka the Slippery Bugger, representing Yogo Cop Records. Big up Rings of Saturn. This is MPC. My musical influences and my background. Um, my influences, I'd say, I was influenced from a young age to sort of get into music and engage with music. Um, but my dad uh, is a musician, he plays in, in a blues band, he has done for a long time. And uh, I was sort of encouraged into uh, working with, well, playing music from a young age. Um, he encouraged me into playing the guitar and I used to play the saxophone a little bit as well. Um, and just generally draw influences from a lot of things, a lot of music that you hear, um, a lot of friends and things like that, experiences, or play a part in influencing me, um, helping me to sort of put, put those influences into the music, try and regurg regurg regurgitate some of it. Um, I'd say as well, growing up, um, your influence quite a lot by the environments you're in and um, I was lucky because I grew up in, in South America um, which I'm very grateful for and uh, I think you can hear parts of that within my music some beats you know um, have that kind of latin -y sort of vibe to it um, and I sample I do dig a lot of sort of Brazilian music and world music um, which also helps to sort of get that kind of sound in there. Um, in terms of uh, my initial sort of start with music, um, I was, uh, I got into hip hop at a young age. I was listening to um, a lot of uh, South American hip hop. Um, people like Control Machete and uh, others and basically just loved the sound of it, um, the, the form of expression, you know, I thought it was quite sort of genuine, genuine sort of category of music, you know, that I could potentially enjoy and learn a lot from. Um, so yeah, I started listening to, to hip hop when I was about 12. Um, 13. I listened to a lot of The Roots as well and people like Mo Steph um, really like their kind of vibe um, and then yeah uh, as I was growing up you know you try out different things I tried to like rap for a bit and just was awful didn't really have much to sort of say at a young age either um, and then I moved to Cardiff when I was about 19 and uh, I lived with um, some guys who they mix records basically jungle, drum and bass, sort of more electronic music and that's where I first sort of would say I started engaging uh, with music properly uh, I started mixing, learned how to use turntables and make <coughs> sort of would record mixes and stuff and play out in clubs <coughs> and um, yeah so I started off DJing around like 19 um, but I didn't really like sort of the, the club culture this the sound of drum and bass is very it's consistently changing and there's not really much of a message in the music um, and uh, I guess I was kind of lazy because I didn't I didn't want to mix hip hop because like you had to learn to cut and all that kind of stuff and it just seemed like a mission to be fair. But um, I then after living in that yard, I moved into another yard with a guy called Brad uh, Diverse Concepts, and he makes he was making hip hop on Reason. On, uh, and he ins he installed it on my computer. He was staying on my sofa for a bit, so he installed Reason into my computer, and he would just make beats. And I would go to work or whatever, come back, and he'd be making a beat. So I sort of started watching him and uh, wanted to 
you know, I was like, oh, this is a good opportunity to, to do something that I've kind of wanted to do. And uh, I figured I'd, 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 you know, give it a go, seeing as the software was on my computer. And um, yeah, he helped me sort of get my head a little bit around reason, basically. So that was kind of the development into the beginning stages of getting me to where I am now, basically. When did I acquire my first musical item and what, what was it? Um, I had a really old PC and like I said my mate Brad put a reason on there. I can't remember which one it was because it was a while ago. Um, it was about six years ago and uh, I bought a little USB uh, keyboard basically. Uh, I can't remember, it was just like an M audio keyboard and uh, I started off with that like learning to chop samples and just triggering, it, triggering them off the keyboard you know playing uh, drum patterns off the keyboard and familiar, familiarizing myself with that basically um, so that was kind of the first piece of music production gear that I got was I shown the ropes or did I pick it up myself? Um, like I said, my mate Brad like showed me how to sort of work with Reason and um, showed me about the NNXT sampler and there were other boys we were hanging out with, my mate Gianni, um, Dirty Dice and my mate Simon who produces under Magenta and we were all kind of learning to make beats together and catching a vibe so I kind of learn bits from people and I find with music uh, production people will show you things you know and I think it's eventually you develop your own way of doing it so you someone might show you something but you might adapt it slightly differently um, so yeah I mean I was shown with regarding reason I was shown like how to do stuff um, and uh, when I moved on to sort of drum machines and hardware, there wasn't really any, you know, I kind of just got my head around that myself. So, how steep was the learning curve? Um, with Reason, I found it was pretty crazy to start with because there's so many different things and you know you have no idea what they are um, and obviously I think it's like that when everyone sort of starts with a piece of software or anything you know so I'd say it was, there was a large learning curve um, learning of what things meant you know like what reverb is and what compression does and what other dynamic processing forms are, you know, I kind of feel like you're cons consistently learning uh, regarding music production, you know, you're always learning new stuff. So I'd say to start with, it was very steep um, because I had no idea what I was up to. And gradually now, um, later on, you know, learning about stuff and what things mean it's a lot easier to sort of grasp and get your head around but you know I feel as though learning never stops you know you're kind of consistently developing through um, you know as long as you keep at it you, you're consistently learning new things and changing ways you do stuff and going back to it so yeah but I'd say definitely at the beginning it was uh, you know, crazy sort of understanding everything and understanding <clears throat> how you structure things and stuff like that. There was a very steep learning curve. Do I feel Reason was the right piece of gear to get me started? Definitely. Um, I think Reason is um, good because programs like that, a software where everything essentially is there for you to make a beat you know you can um, you can learn about all aspects of music production um, you're not limited to a particular thing um, for example let's say the MPC 2000 Excel um, it doesn't 
unless you buy the effects, it doesn't come with effects, so you wouldn't necessarily learn too much about effects, things like compression, reverb, the sort of dynamic processing parts. Whereas with Reason, it was all kind of there, and um, it gives someone the freedom to sort of experiment with those things and actively learn about them. So for me, I feel felt as though it was it was definitely worth it. Also, with the NXT, you can't actually see audio, so a lot of it is done just through your ear, which is a good method of, of training yourself. You know, getting your ear. Um, used to chopping samples without actually seeing them it's, it's a good learning a good way to learn definitely what equipment does one use now and why um, I've got quite a bit of equipment um, I kind of like having the, the freedom to sort of choose uh, between samplers or like incorporate them all in I don't have like a set way of working I like to just plug things in everywhere and see what happens um, but I use the Akai S950 um, the Akai MPC 2000 XL the SP303 and um, <coughs> my flatmate he lends me his SP404 SX um, we kind of like share our equipment um, so yeah shouts to Jack for that um, and also I use VHS um, for sampling, I like sampling off of VHS as well, um, and I also use a tape deck. Um, but yeah, the reason why I use these is because I just find it a lot more fun working with samplers, drum machines. You know, you can actively engage, put a bit more energy into the beat as opposed to just sort of sh uh, sh staring at a screen. Um, I do use Logic to um, record into and to sort of mix stuff down I find you know you can get some really good plugins that just sort of make stuff sound better but the initial sound from the drum machines you know the, the hardware sort of sound I prefer so I just tend to sort of stick with the drum machines for sort of creating the ideas and things like that really so yeah that's, that's pretty much it. What equipment has I used over the years? Um, well, I started off with Reason and the uh, little USB keyboard I was telling you about. I then moved on to um, Logic in terms of software and uh, I used an MPD for a while as well. Um, got the hang of like chopping stuff off up really well using that um, it's really simple to use as well um, and then <clears throat> after that I decided that you know I wanted to just start experimenting with hardware um, so I've, I've used quite a lot of stuff I, I, I like just having loads of equipment basically um, I used well I got the uh, S950 first I got it from my mate Tom Young um, for 100 quid, which was a bargain. Thank, thanks, Tom. Um, after the S950, I bought a Roland Phantom XA, um, and I used that for quite a while. There's keys on it, and you've got pads as well, and there's loads of really good noises, um, piano noises, bass noises, things like that. So that allowed me to sort of experiment with sound as well. Um, that broke, uh, which is a shame. Um, and then after that, I got given the 2000 XL, which I'm really grateful for. My friend John, thanks John, gave me the 2000 XL, and I, I started using the 2000 XL and the S950 together. Um, they work really well together. <coughs> after that, I've used a Moog for a bit. Someone lent us a Moog. Uh, fatty, we had it for like a year. Was making real dope bass lines, sort of synth noises with that, um, and then we had to give that back. Um, and then I bought the SP303. Um, it's like a 
really easy to use, really hands-on sampler. You can get ideas going really quickly. Um, you know, if you want to just loop something up, it's really easy to do. Or if you want to make a beat quickly, you can sort of do that quite easily. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, I've been using the my flatmate's SP404SX as well. So yeah, I've just kind of try and use as much equipment as I can, use a cassette deck as well just to record ideas onto, record drum breaks onto, bring them back out, put them through the, S, uh, through the MPC or the SP, you know, makes, gives them a bit of sat natural saturation, tape saturation which is nice. Um, but yeah, I feel as though I want more equipment, uh, hopefully it's, you know, it will carry on and I'll never, never stop buying samplers. <laughs> Do I prefer software or hardware? Um, I'd say when I'm constructing a beat, so chopping samples up, making drums and things like that, the uh, creative process, the creative part of it, I definitely prefer the drum machines um, and hard, so essentially hardware. I feel as though um, you know, it's a lot more fun. It's, it's, you can put a lot more energy into it, um, and you're not, you're, you're not as limited as to sort of just watching the screen. Um, having loads of samples as well, you can get other people involved if you want to. You know what I mean? Which is always good. A bit of input from others. Um, in terms of like actually polishing off beats and and uh, structuring them getting them to sound good, mixing them down, mastering that kind of thing. I'd say uh, software, um, you know, maybe if I had a studio or access to a studio with a desk and outboard compressors, all that kind of stuff, I'd be more inclined into using hardware. But in the later stages of, of my production, I prefer, yeah, using software because, you know, you can get some real good plug plugins and things like that that can help just to polish a beat and get it sounding you know proper getting get it sounding good for, for playing out that kind of stuff so so yeah ideas and creative process hardware all the way and then the later stages mastering mixing and structuring stuff i'd say software my favorite brand of musical equipment uh and why I'd say Akai just because they were the first bits of hardware that I got essentially um, and I just felt comfortable using them um, and sort of enjoy their machines that they're, they're really, once you get your head around them, they're really easy to flow through. I love the sounds that you can get from them. Um, I've also got a big up Roland though, I love the SP. It's, it's really good for live stuff um, and and getting you know ideas going. So I'm kind of torn between the two, but I'd say Akai just because it's kind of the first samplers I got my hands on. So I've got to stay loyal to them, really. What musical equipment would I recommend to a beginner? Um, <clears throat> I'd say it depends largely on the individual. Um, if you're generally passionate about making music um, and you've got the patience to maybe acquire a drum machine something basic to start maybe like a SP 404 um, that aren't too complicated to use um, you know you can you can sample really easily on it you can resample when it comes with effects so you can learn about effects but someone who is just sort of wants to test the water I'd say just get a um, like a cracked copy of Reason or something like that off the internet and get a USB keyboard or something like that and just sort of experiment and see if it's something you actually want to dive into basically um, but yeah it takes it doesn't happen overnight as well you've got to like really stick at it so you know, we've got, got to have patience as well. Patience is important. Why did I choose software over hardware? Um, to be honest with you, 
I started off with software just because it was a cheaper method of making music and it allowed me to sort of experiment a lot more with my sound. Um, but I choose nowadays hardware simply because I enjoy using it more. You know, um, a lot of the sort of first, the, the original hip hop sound was all sort of done on hardware. There wasn't Logic or Ableton or anything like that. And, you know, I pay, take my hat off to the people who've made absolute bangers using, you know, using hardware. So I kind of, you know, it's good, good, good method to sort of try and, and uh, experiment with, you know, to try and uh, see whether you're capable of doing the same thing, making music on, on, on the hardware. Um, I choose it also because it is largely fun and I feel like it's a very good way of getting rid of energy, you know, hitting pads and, you know, you can stand up and get really stuck into it. It's a good way, it's a good thing to do and I feel like you can put a bit more of yourself into the music as opposed to sort of just staring at the screen. Um, and also it's a good way of just having jams with people, you know, a lot of a lot of beats I make with other people, we just sort of jam, get those samples chopped and see where it, where it takes us. And that, I like the idea of that as well. And I think it's a lot easier to do with hardware as opposed to just sort of a computer basically. So, yeah, hardware. My views on sampling, I um, obviously like, I don't know, a lot of people flip stuff off YouTube or the internet or stuff and I don't think there's anything, I don't like despise that or disagree with it or anything like that. I just, um, I just think the people that have actively gone and searched for records and stuff and uh, dedicated time to to find a record, say, um, you know, you've got to pay homage to that. You know, you've got to big them up for doing that. Um, I I think it's good as well to put, to, you know, to, to buy records because in the long run you're furthering your knowledge of sort of, of music you're learning more you know there's a lot of stuff that isn't on available on the internet or wherever that is that that is accessible that is in record form which you just can't access basically so i don't have a problem with people um sampling off the internet my new year's resolution was actually to sample youtube <laughs> because if I didn't stick to it, you know, it didn't really matter. But I personally, I try and flip records most of the time. Um, a lot of sort of talking bits from movies and stuff I am guilty of taking from from the internet and stuff like that. But I, I literally, I don't have a problem to each their own, you know. Um, I think as well, sampling cassettes and videos is a good thing. Um, videos, and cassettes are generally a lot cheaper than records, you know, so I just try and sample everything really, but I do, I do like digging. I generally enjoy going out and buying records and, you know, hold, holding them and having them in my hand and the artwork and stuff. So I'm more fond of, of people who sort of dig and, and sample from records really, but I don't have a problem with people who, you know, uh, sample off YouTube is to each their own you know which genres of music do I sample most and why um, I find myself at the moment I'm really into like pianos and roads and sort of guitars so I have been digging for that kind of stuff you know um, but I'm open to all of it really a lot like i said before i grew up in south america so i do like sampling a lot of like brazilian joints and sort of world music I kind of enjoy that more i guess because uh i grew up listening to to that surrounded by that kind of music and sound and atmosphere so i guess that 
might play a part in it, but I generally try and just dig anything. If I like like the look of a record, I'll buy it. And, you know, if it's if it's got some heat on it, then that's great. You know what I mean? But I feel as though um, by sampling, by sort of not not having a particular thing that you sample, it helps the development of your music as well. You know, you could take a record that someone's got that they say, oh, there's nothing you can flip on there. And then if you manage to flip something, you know, and you, you've really worked hard at making some small chops or you found something and got it to work, then, you know, it shows, <clears throat> it, it helps to sort of um, develop your skill in sampling, do you know what I mean? So I try and stay open-minded about what a sample just see what happens you know try and don't particularly stick to a genre but I go through phases I guess you know of, uh, of choosing stuff you know um, do I share my sampling info with people um, yeah I mean I definitely I definitely do I'm not I mean people that I know and roll with you know homies mates um, it's all love do you know what I mean so just if you find someone who's got who you've never heard of before who sounds good, you know, you may as well tell them. You know, I, I don't really have a problem with that. There's so much music out there to sample and stuff. Um, so yeah, I don't really, I don't really care about that too much. When I was younger, I used to be like, no, I'm not, not telling you or whatever. You know what I mean? But now. I don't really care. There's there's so much music out there, you know. It's and it, it's music's there to be shared anyway. So you know, you shouldn't really just keep it hush. You know, what I mean, obviously, if it's someone I've never met, I'm not gonna just start telling them to go and flip Abdul Ibrahim joints and things like that. But yeah, if someone asks me, I'm not gonna um, hide hide it. Whatever, it's not a big secret. You know, what I mean. How do I acquire samples? Um, predominantly, I, I generally enjoy collecting records. Um, so I go out and when I've got money to sort of spend on records, I'll go out and buy records. Um, you know, I, I think I'll always do that. I hope I'll always do that. I also buy tapes and videos as well, you know, um, also, come across stuff you know just find stuff on the, on the streets you know people chucking out old cassettes um, charity shops as well are really good um, you can always find good stuff in charity shops um, also I've got friends that collect records um, my mate Joe um, Joey D's he's got a massive record collection and he's always popping over with records and you know, been like, oh, sample this, you know. So that's when I don't have money to, to go digging, I just go around to his house. Um, also, anything that I record live, um, if I'm recording vocalists or I've got a mic, you know, so you can create samples, you know, noises, um, things like lighters lots of wood, flip flops once, that was, I used flip flops, layered it with a snare drum, that was really good. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I mean, sometimes if I can't, if, there, if I really want to sample something and I can't find a record or I don't have it, I'll, I'll uh, use the internet, you know, uh, to get it, definitely. But problem with that is the sound quality is not always great you know uh, favorite sampler and favorite software um, <clears throat> that's a tricky one for the for the so I'll start with the easy one software my favorite software is logic because I feel confident with it so um, I know what to do um, and I've got some good plugins um, that help me sort of with like I said before the later stages of producing the mixing mastering um, and yeah I, 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 I've learned now how to use it so I'm really fluent behind it and I can edit and 
<coughs> edit my beats with it and stuff like that. You can also incorporate movies in, which is quite useful working sound for movies. In terms of samplers, um, it's a tricky one. I love the SP404, the uh, effects and how quick you can sort of get a beat going, you know. Um, but I would say overall, the MPC 2000 XL, um, just because it's classic and it's been there, I've had it for a while now. And you know, you can, there's a lot more pads on it and you have, <clears throat> I don't know, I just find it easier to work with. It's, the SP404 can be quite limiting. I don't really use the uh, sequencer in the SP404. Or if I sort of just resample and play live and then loop that up. Whereas with the MPC, you know, I usually just have it on a four bar and layer it up and then use track mute, you know, and sequence it in live and stuff. So I'd say I've also got the effects on here, you know, the distortion's really good. Um, and just the, the sound of it is better. The, the SP404 can be a bit tinny sometimes. Um, so yeah, I mean the, the S950 as well for drums, I really love it and bass as well. So I'd say overall the 2000 XL for sure. Do I focus more on the sample on the drums when making a joint? Um, I think the it depends on what sort of joint I'm making as well. I mean both aspects of it are important obviously drums uh, you know uh, getting a swing and making them pump is is a part of hip-hop you know like uh, when you listen to, to, to hip-hop joints drums really stand out and, you know they kind of dictate the whole movement of the, the song a lot of the time um, but then saying that sample is important as well it depends if it's like an instrumental I might pay more attention to the sample because you know I'm listening <coughs> more to the sort of uh, rhythm and, and, and the sort of sounds within the, the beat uh, whereas on a rap joint you know you can have like a tiny little sort of couple of piano stabs and there's more dominance with the drums and the lyrics so I, I, I can't really answer that question it depends like totally on on the type of song I'm making but I generally try and uh, focus on both aspects uh, when making a joint definitely I mean especially more so drums I'd say you know just drums have to bang you know if you if you've got some if your drums don't quite hit then you know it's, it's never gonna have as much of an impact as it could basically so the best MPC from the golden era and the new era um, I, I'm not too knowledgeable of the new MPCs. I've kind of I've used the 500 and I've used the 2000 XL, and I've got friends who use the 2500, <coughs> like Samaya, my mate Ter Terry Tonks, and some of the beats made on there are crazy. You know, I think they come with like bare new different things. You know, and the MPC Ren. Uh, that's that's like some crazy new thing as well. Um, I'd say in terms of golden era, um, just from hearing albums that have sort of been made on like the MPC 60, that for me is probably like a, a sound that I really like. Um, I'd love to like have the opportunity to use one for a bit, get my head around it. Um, <clears throat> I think the sound, yeah, the sound of it is just classic, you know, just ticks all the boxes for me. In terms of the new ones, I'm not really too sure, to be honest with you. The, the MPC Ren, um, that looks like it's very versatile, you know, it looks like you can do loads of stuff on it and works well with uh, software. I don't know which software, maybe Ableton or something, I'm not sure, but it looks like it's real easy to use sort of 
sending information back and forth, you know. Um, but I'd say, in terms of news, NPCs, maybe, maybe that just for, even though I haven't used it, but just for, you know, what it looks like it's capable of. And it's uh, versatility. It's something that I should probably look into a bit more. But I'm, I'm content with my 2000 XL, you know. What are my two favourite instruments and why? Um, I'd love to learn the double bass, basically. Um, it's massive, I reckon it just looks real cool, you know, when you watch old sort of jazz quartets play, there's some dude in there nodding his head with a huge double bass, I think. That looks rad, and like the sound of it's real nice, you know, um, compliments. Sort of jazzy, chilled, laid back hip hop as well, you know. So the ability of being able to play that would would be amazing to incorporate into beat making, um, and also the drums. I'd love to have a drum kit, hopefully one day, um, and just learn like all the breaks and just get real good on the drums and <coughs> record, you know, all your own drum breaks and stuff. And, have them to layer up um, <clears throat> and yeah you could just be real loud and piss the neighbours off even more <laughs> which would be funny so yeah I'd say the double bass and the drums if I could learn anything uh, maybe the keys but the keys is something that like I think you could you could learn quite easily just you know I've sort of learned little bits but predominantly if I could master any instruments it would be the drums and the double bass can I play any musical instruments, and if so, which? I used to play the guitar loads. Um, I still pick it up and can fiddle around with it and play, you know, stuff. Um, in my early days of making beats, I used to try and incorporate it a bit more. Um, that's something that I should probably work on more because I guess it is an advantage. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll try and work on that more. And I used to play the saxophone as well, um, but I broke both my front teeth. And uh, you know, the mouth positioning requires you to bite down, and, and it used to just resonate and like really, it used to just kind of mess with my head. It used to hurt quite a lot, so I had to pack that in basically, which is a shame because it's a real good instrument. If I could choose two producers to work with on a joint and why, um, this is a tough question. I thought about it a lot. Basically, <coughs> this is quite cheeky as well, but if I could pick, I'd pick probably Damu Fudgeman because he's ill and he looks like he's having so much fun when he's making beats as well. I reckon it would be a good, good, good time spent with him. And you know, he uses the MPC like it, it's got it down, so I feel like I'd probably learn a lot from him. And then the other producer, which is cheeky, it would be either MF Doom, because he actually makes beats and he raps so you know you might you might be making a joint and he's like yeah I'll rap on this you know which would be a bonus or Q-Tip because he makes beats as well and uh, he's you know a dope rapper so he might be inclined to if he's feeling the joint to just rap on it and obviously that would be a bonus so yeah I'd go for definitely Damu and then I'm torn between Q-Tip do basically. If I could handpick two MCs of my choice to work on joints and why, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be naughty, I'm gonna do two UK, then I'm gonna do two uh, foreign. In UK, I'd like to work with Hawkhouse, I think they're amazing, you know, they're their lyrical content is ridiculous, you know, um, and they're just such a talented group of people. The, the girl, I'm not sure what her name is, but she's a dope rapper and she can sing. 
and I just really like sort of the vibe they catch on uh, on a track, you know, like real passive, easy to listen to hip hop, you know, it's real laid back and smooth. So I'd say Hawkeye's definitely. Um, and then <clears throat> another UK, I'd say I'd love to work with Split Profits um, and just see what happens, just try and make complete opposite from the other crew, just make some loud, you know, rowdy stuff, you know, I think they're such a versatile group of MCs that they're, they're, they're killing it as well at the moment. Um, I just like to see what what we could conjure up. Do you know what I mean? If we all put our heads together. Um, so yeah, I'd say them two from England. From the rest of the world, Juju Rogers. Um, I think he's in a crew called Man of Boom. He's recently just dropped his solo EP. He lives. He's like half American. Lives in Germany, I think. But he's <coughs> he's just got a real nice tone of voice. And uh, his 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 rapping ability is sick. I mean, I rate him a lot. Um, and then I'd say <coughs> maybe like Redman. I just love to work with Redman. Um, he's just classic. Do you know what I mean? Loud. He's just. His, his tracks are just bangers like anything he touches just turns into a banger he's fucking ill basically uh, top three producers and why the number one producer for me is quite easy um, would be Can Kick um, I, I just love his whole style of making beats um, his, his sort of I don't know, it just ticks all the boxes for me, the sound he gets, the vibe of his beats, you know, they're real, they really touch me, I guess. Um, I've got pretty much most of his records as well. Um, I've, I've rated him for a long time. His, you know, his songs sometimes start off with like these mad jazz skits that sort of develop into like, the sickest beat that just drops in and it's just, you know what I mean, it's just amazing. It makes you want to just start rapping or like break dancing or something like that. It's, it's, it's sick. Um, <clears throat> secondly, I'd have to say Madlib. Madlib is um, just, he's just made absolute bangers like through and through. I love like the dusty sort of raw sound he, he gets. Love uh, loop pack as well, like all the old loop pack joints. You know, it just sounds like that bedroom boom bap. Um, it's kind of like what I'm into, what I like. So I'd say Madlib as well. He's I like him because he's mad lazy sometimes, and he literally like just loops two loops up. You know what I mean? Just puts a snare over it and like. <clears throat> Obviously manipulates the sample a little bit, but just how cheeky he is of just like getting away with playing a loop, do you know what I mean? And then he's got the ability to sort of take it further and go into stuff with depth, you know? And uh, yeah, I think he's a really talented person, really talented individual. Um, thirdly, I'd say one, two. I mean, He's a German dude, and I've only sort of been listening to him for the past year and a half. But his stuff is like really laid back, real simple, just quite slow, and just sort of, I don't know, it's just something about it. It's just, it's very mellow and just easy going, you know what I mean? It helps me to get through my days and things like that it's good to listen to when you're skating or just boiling around town you know it's you can listen to it anywhere you put it on and anyone will like it it's you know it's real sort of jazzy and just smooth and like really laid back you know so i'd say can kick mad lib and one two who am i feeling right now and why um a lot of uh stuff coming out of germany actually that like, coming I think a lot of it's probably out of Berlin and Cologne and stuff. Just like 
the Radio Juicy lot. Um, Kota, there's a label called Kota, and it's like Scarface, Joe Space, Frost, One Two, that I mentioned before. Um, they're just, I don't know, I just really like the, the sound they're creating. It's real, real genuine and like rugged, you know, like dusty sort of vibe um, complemented by like really, really good rapping. Um, also feeling a lot of like the KU stuff, King Underground, Smire stuff, <clears throat> the stuff they put out with that Bora dude, you know, real some real good music coming out of there talented like crew of people you know um ivan av and fred fades from norway they're dope um, also in, uh, on the king underground thing you know they're they're really real good um there's a geezer called capri sun actually from america um hopefully gonna be working with him um a lot of like underground soundcloud producers you know that that aren't really like massive at all but just make real good beats you know like Dave Sparks, um, Juan Rios, just people like that really. Um, within England uh, I'm not massively up to date but there's a lot of good music coming out of England at the moment which I should probably pay more attention to. Um, Deb TBRSA, he's an ill producer, um, I rate his stuff a lot. Um, obviously SP that I mentioned before, Defenders of Style, they're wicked, I really like their stuff. Um, but yeah, just I'm quite open-minded about it, I just sort of need to, it's just a case of listening to it all, there's so much stuff out there basically. But yeah. That's pretty much it. Mostly German artists. Browse Swan as well. He's a, I think he's originally from Chile, um, moved to Germany, but he's an incredible producer. You know, he's got that classic sort of boom bap, jazzy sound, um, which I just rate so much. So the first beat I'm going to showcase. Uh, is a loop I took from the OJs, this record here, called uh, Together We Cry. And uh, basically, I took various little cuts from it. Well, I recorded the whole sample into the S950, and I had the drums already looped in Logic using the Roland uh, Phantom that I don't use anymore, it's broken. And um, yeah, I just took little bits of like, I took a main loop and then took little bits of vocal hits that I'll show you. So this is the loop. I also 45'd it. So I took this loop with the guitar various other little bits of like the vocals and that so this is it here it's coming <laughs> Line as well off the Phantom, the Roland, it's got some good bass hits in it. Um, yeah, and it kind of develops through various little vocal hits come in. Bits of guitar and stuff. an easy one to make once I had the loops in place I kind of knew what I was doing where I wanted to go yeah you can hear subtle like vocal chops coming in Where I sort of 
filtered the sample, the main loop out, so that the other bits stick through the mix a bit more. I think I also played a shaker, I do that quite a lot. Just play a shaker over the top. Quite like doing that. <laughs> Little breakdown. bit where it sort of filters out. And then it switches up again. So I took another little bit of the sample and just filtered it. And yeah, it gives it a bit more of a variety keeps people engaged into listening, you know, switches up a bit. So yeah, that's that one. So the next track is, uh, actually it's dropping real soon on Wax. It's called The Game, featuring Benedict, my homie illiterate on the B side with uh, a track he produced. You can get that at the Yogo Cop website. <coughs> and basically, I flipped this soundtrack here, um, it's a film called Lenny, I've never actually seen it, but it's got Dustin Hoffman just talking on it. Um, but yeah, there's a loop in there that I took. It's very sort of quick. It's very easy to miss. And I also took a horn. I'm pretty sure it was from here. Um, just took like a little horn, uh, one one shot, just to sort of give the beat a bit 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 more sort of depth, give it something else. So this is the loop. I took the bit of him talking as well, saying that's the end of the movie, because I thought it'd be cool to sort of incorporate that at the beginning of the track. And that's the end of the movie. I'll just turn it up a little bit. And that's the end of the movie. So I took that piano. Took that horn. That's pretty much it. And that's the end of the movie. Curtain closed, red velvet retracted. Lights in the auditorium were laid attractive. The audience left through 11 so, separate yeah. hatches. Back to back. Right, I think I chopped it all up on the NPC. And I uh, in one position. I can't remember how I made the drums, but I most definitely put them through the S950 because I do that quite a lot. Um, one thing I would say that I wasn't happy with was in the after sequencing everything out, obviously into Logic, I, uh, I feel I over compressed the snare. It doesn't hit as hard as I kind of wanted it to hit. Um, but yeah, that's one thing that I wasn't quite happy with. Benedict put these uh, little vocal chops in in the chorus. Along with the horns, I felt it complemented it quite well, you know. The tune's called The Game, and it's all about sort of the rap game, so it gives it a bit more theme. Um, and also another thing I did at the end of uh, the track, I don't know if you've seen The Wire, there's a character called Omar and he, there's a little bit where he's saying it's all in the game, he's talking about the game, whatever game he's involved with, and I sort of incorporated it in at the end, uh, just took it straight off YouTube. Um, that with uh, sort of talking bits if I can't find them or whatever I tend to just sort of turn to YouTube for sort of talking bits not so much samples try and flip records mainly yeah so um 
um, the next beat I'm going to showcase is just a beat that I made quite a while ago. Um, be sick to get some someone rapping on it. It's quite a hard beat, you know. I don't normally make sort of the hard ones. I make more chilled, but I was attracted to the artwork of this album. A lot of um, stuff that I just see that looks quite cool. I tend to listen to, and sometimes it comes out with some some good stuff. So yeah, I've never heard of these people either, but I'm definitely going to look out for them more. And the sample is this. So yeah, I just took that loop basically. Um, it's quite funny, I was listening to this record I had a little shed when I lived with my parents and uh, my mum was bringing me a cup of tea, bless her. And she heard the loop and she was like, yeah, you should flip that. So I decided to. Um, and I just took a break and basically chopped it in two sort of parts. I put the break through the S950, looped the break up and then chopped the sample into two bits and uh, had to get it in time because there's drums underneath it. So to layer, layer the drums so they didn't sort of, you know, sound out of time, but this is it. And now, ladies and gentlemen... So it's quite a classic break. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but I beefed it up. I added more. I always add more drums into the break to try and beef them up. Layer up the snares, layer up the kicks. Um, I also uh, I bought a lot of the bass out of the sample as well, using the S950, the filter. I kind of filtered, layered it up so I had the high end of the sample, and then the low end with the bass sort of uh, more predominant in the mix. Um, I think I put like a tiny bit of sub just under the kick to sort of bulk it out a bit. But yeah, it kind of filters out a little bit later. Um, the idea behind that is to sort of, if someone did rap on it, there'd be less, there'd be a bit more space so the vocal would come through a bit more, you know, like, like that within the development of a uh, song. But yeah, I was quite happy with this one. Yeah. So this next beat, um, I flipped. She's uh, dope, you should check her out if you haven't. Sarah Vaughan, and uh, it's got Quincy on the production. You can't really go wrong with Quincy, you know. Um, but yeah, I flipped a track off here, I just took a loop and uh, chopped it up. Um, I filtered it out and stuff, did various things to it to sort of help the development through. Um, and I was real lucky because uh, shouts to 5050 Bristol Skate Skate Shop, they used this track in one of their edits, so big up to them. But this is the the sample. <laughs> I just took that first little bit um, and I also play it because they wanted a, a track for a skate edit it's sort of there's a big build up to it um, and there's some breakdowns and stuff kind of to help give something for them to edit to do you know what I mean something for them to work with as well you can hear the the loop there that I took. And the bass is uh, just a 
bass are made in uh, logic basically I've, I've got various sort of bass noises that I've made um, I constantly play around with and fiddle with just to switch up nice long reverberated snare uh, I've got the effects on the MPC so I use them quite a lot to make some wicked snares and stuff coming in so yeah I programmed the drums in the MP standardly put them through the S950 um, I always fiddle with stuff after in Logic as well just to try and make it sound a bit get it sound a bit cleaner and stuff Developing the samples filtering out and filtering back in. Just keeps people engaged, keeps them listening, you know. It's quite hard uh, sometimes when you just have a loop going all the time. Although you might love it, it other people, you, you don't realise it, but they'll switch off, so it's good to keep them engaged. A little breakdown. The idea of the breakdown was to help with the editing, you know, so something for Rich, the guy who did the edit, to, to work with. Drop back in. track I'm going to showcase is off um, our mixtape we recently dropped, Teen Dreams Volume 2, just featuring all the crew basically. Um, the loop is like a tiny little, I don't know, maybe like 8 seconds, maybe not even that, and I slowed it down. Um, Literally, literally that. So, with the uh, little piano hits, um, and yeah, I'd made the drums already on the MP, played them in, and was just listening to loads of stuff, and just felt like chopping that might be able to work with it. Um, it's got Illiterate and Mr. Freets on it. So you can hear the bass there, pitched it down in the little piano. Kept it like quite lo-fi, lo-fi sort of sound. Yeah, I'm just another slack at your raps and knocking back another pack of neck. We batter sets like the catch is fresh. And uh, obviously it's a lot of bass already in the sample, so there's no need to put any bass on it. Uh, kind of focused on bringing the bass out within the mix afterwards. Um, and yeah, I felt like rapping would be good on it because uh, obviously there's a lot of space within the within the song, so within the mid frequencies, there's not much there. It's kind of bass, drums, and a little bit of piano. So you know, I felt like the vocal could fill that gap in nicely. And yeah, luckily people jumped on. But yeah, so I just chopped like the bass hit, the piano, and then the boom boom, that bit just there. Just had it on three pads, pitched it down, and it kind of just all came together. Um, yeah, so pretty, pretty easy one. Day, whilst you're rubbing in free bits, so just pass free. It's free bait, was in the coffee to sit. 
So the next beat I'm gonna showcase, quite a popular record, a lot of people probably have this classic um, shaft. Um, I flipped Bumpy's Lament, uh, it's been done like loads of times, but sometimes I like sort of flipping a sample that's been done quite a bit and seeing you know what you can do with it. Um, again I took a break, I can't remember the name of the breaks, I never do. Um, but yeah, flipped. <laughs> So yeah, it's been done quite a bit. So I thought, fuck it. Ooh. So I thought I'll just give it a go. Do you know what I mean? Um, and yeah, I focused on just getting it to work nicely with the drums. Uh, bought the bass out of the sample. So, uh, layered up the break again, the snare and stuff, um, just to make it punch a bit harder. You can hear the bass in the sample, there's some good bass in there. So, using the S950 and using the EQs in uh, Logic and stuff, I brought out the bass. Kind of just just took a loop basically and just rolled with it. I think I took like some little guitar hits as well and just sort of high passed them, led them underneath just to sort of open it up a bit, open the beat up a bit more. But yeah. Do with some rapping, maybe something like that. I don't know, we'll see what happens basically. But yeah, I was quite happy with, with the way it turned out, really. So, the next beat I'm gonna showcase, I flipped John Clemmer. I like, I love John Clemmer's stuff. Um, it, anything that I ever see, I always just buy, don't have to listen to it. Got this for two quid as well from Rat Records in Camberwell. It's a real good digging spot there. Um, but yeah, I took this loop. It's quite a chiller this one, um, but yeah, I like I like the chilled ones as well, you know. So yeah, I think I started off with the hat. I kind of looped that up. That was like bunch of hats that I sort of looped, <coughs> looped together and then uh, played in the kick and snare over the top of that. Um, I looped the hats up in Logic, it was just a bit easier to do. Played the kick and snare in through the MP, chopped the sample up on the MP and uh, flipped it like this basically and then Again, the bass line is just a bass that I've made in Logic. Um, I've got the M Audio keyboard there, so get my jazz fingers out now and then, try and play some bass. But yeah, it's just more of a mellow one, this one. Nice beat to skate to. Okay, the next beat I'm gonna showcase, uh, George Sharing. Satin Affair, um, classic in most of the charity shops, worth going for. There's always bits of strings and piano in there that you can take. Um, 
I think I got a horn off another record. I can't remember exactly which record. I did try looking for it, but couldn't find it. Um, so this is the loop I took. <laughs> I just took that bit. Um, this track is also off Volume 2 featuring Benedict. Uh, shouts to Tom Yum on the cuts. So, yeah, let's, let's hear it. Everyone's going back to the roots again. Some are going back into country and some are going I take this, um, um, back into basic blues. This is Jim Morrison four or five years, uh, talking about new, um, where he thinks music is going to move to in the future. And if you listen, he's talking about tapes and electronics, you know, so I thought it was relevant to hip hop. And the tune's called One of the Same, it's, it's, the chorus is, if you love hip hop, you're one of the same. So I thought it would bring relevance. Tom Young cutting. It's the painter and decorated kid that to let it slip. I hit the lemon at 11, never get a grip. Pip a pen pal, send bits to Benedict, blending the beat of So I just kind of took that loop. Then we'll fit into none of your mind. Sorry, bitch, I'm a bit thick, stubborn, and I'm not switching. Chop the next bit up, the sort of chord progression. And it just sort of works. Dinner, babe, din din smished in star. I ain't gonna be Made the drums on the MP. Um, and there's a little horn that comes in later, I thought you needed something else, so I bought a little horn in, kind of built up. Break broke it down in the chorus, let it rebuild again, you know what I mean, a bit more a bit of progression. Um, so yeah, I quite like this tune, it's, it's a bonus track as well, so if you haven't bought the CD you won't be able to hear it, but yeah, and, uh, you got Tommy on to cut on it later as well, uh, just felt like it would work, you killed it as well. Back down, put the talking back in, and then it builds up with the chorus again. And then you've got sort of cuts on the outro, but I feel um, yeah, they sound good. Well, I guess I'm just another in love with the same place, passing off a buzz in the car for lame days, juggling production with fucking. Get this on our bank cap. Freeze, Petrelli, Cell Rock, just to mention a few people, Chemistry, so yeah. Keeping it with the theme of hip hop, you know, uh, obviously cutting's a large part of it, we thought it would be a nice touch. This is a beat I'm going to showcase on the SP404, just switch it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to like fiddle with the looper as well they're pretty good for live stuff um, but it's a beat that I made on my birthday um, off the beat tape I made a whole beat tape on my birthday and I can't remember what I flipped but I took like a sort of a piano lick and um, I took like these percussion these sort of stick noises incorporated them in with the drum beat <coughs> um, this little bit for an intro of a record. Oh. Took a little bit of an a cappella as well that are um, played the bass line in. Just took the notes off the keyboard and put arranged them on here. Find like the bass brought it all together quite nicely. 
And the little sort of hats, dusty wood like noises helped it to give it that swing. Well, well, good fun, good for life. Little breakdown, filtered it out. Back into the drums and bass. So basically, I'm gonna take you through um, how I approach making beats. I don't have like a set way really. I um, I've got like like I told you before, quite a bit of equipment. Sometimes I'll just stick to the SP, or I'll just use the MPC, or sometimes I use a bit of everything. Put Kate put stuff through the S950 back into the MPC, or record onto the SP back into the MP sort of however I feel really um, I feel like it's quite good because it leaves sort of an openness you don't consistently stick to one method um, so yeah it kind of makes it a bit more interesting um, so yeah I took a loop uh, well just some chops from this Sarah Vaughan joint uh, track called I Close My Eyes um, I kind of rushed to, to be honest to put it together. I like taking a bit more time, but it's cool for the purpose of this exercise. So this is some of the chops I took. Ooh. Lovely day. Took that guitar, started off with that. And through the So yeah, I took the main part first, um, recorded it through the SP404 with a little bit of reverb on the sample, um, quite like doing that, um, just gives the, the noise you start with a bit more depth, obviously I don't overcook it with the reverb, but it just gives it a bit more depth and allows it to sit in the speakers nicer I feel. Um, oh. There's my drums. So yeah, I pitched... What did I do? Yeah, I pitched it up slightly as well. So I started off with... That kind of loop. And sort of arranged that so I could... Play around with that. I also took... Little other little vocal snips just to cut in now and then and uh, I'd probably filter some of these perhaps um, when it came to sort of recording out some of them I might sort of filter out a little bit just to again give it a bit more depth keep it sort of interesting um, the drums I basically, I love making drums in the SP404, there's a lot of uh, good effects that you can use, um, there's a, you know, the filter is pretty nice, you can, you can sort of trim away a bit of the ha high end uh, of stuff and make it sound rugged, um, the lo-fi button is really good as well, just to get that instant lo-fi, um, kind of cheating, but... <laughs> Doesn't, doesn't matter too much to me. Um, so yeah, I basically played the drums uh, off of a couple of pads, resampled them 
onto another pad and then just kept resampling them until I was content with them. I then brought them into the MP. So we've got them here. And I looped them up um, with the uh, loop button here on the MP. It sort of it'll tell you roughly. It doesn't always loop perfectly, but it'll give you an idea of what tempo you should be rolling at. Um, another thing I did with these drums is I resampled them within the MP. So I resampled them down um, using the the resample function on here so if you listen there's a slight difference but I prefer I sort of re-recorded them resampled them at 16 bit I just feel like they knock a bit more you know what I mean and it gives see these are slightly quieter quite swung it just I just prefer that sort of sound it's general generally down to sort of uh, your own individual preference do you know what I mean so yeah so started off hold on a sec started off with uh, the drums just on a loop um, and I actually because we're in Brighton I found uh, where is it I found um, a record with some seagulls on it <laughs> so I just thought I'd throw some seagulls in there as a little bit of background sort of atmosphere it's quite nice doing that and obviously there's crackle on that record as well which sort of adds sort of texture um, and gives it that sort of more original sort of boom bap sound that's what I've, I think anyway so if you listen you can hear very subtle seagulls in there so what my next stage would be to sort of map out an idea basically um, and usually that's where I use the, the MP. I don't always record the sequences, the chops, you know, directly onto here. I'll, a lot of the time I'll record live into Logic. I don't have memory on here um, so I can't really save anything so by automatically recording into Logic I can save and I know that everything's safe in case you know everything crashes or the MP cuts out um, touch wood that won't happen so yeah I'll... my process would be to just sort of have a little play around with these until I sort of come up with something that I'd like so just a rough idea Yeah, I generally try and come up with something um, and record it into Logic. Um, I've got effects as well on my MPC. That's one thing I chose to do is to, to buy effects rather than memory. Because um, obviously the, the effects on this MPC are kind of unique to it. You know, there aren't really any plugins or anything like that that sort of can mimic that and the uh, the distortion effect is really good um, and obviously using software as well as hardware I don't I don't really need to save anything I'm you know so I'll just save onto logic so I thought I, I won't bother with memory um, so my next step would be if I came up with something would be to record the drums into logic so what I'd do is play them on the loop, I'd solo out the seagulls where are they? yeah so I'd record out the drums basically so 86.5 is the tempo and what I'd probably do well what I'd most definitely do 
is I record the drums into the S950. Um, again, down to preference, um, I'll pick a sample rate to record them in. If I'm happy with the way they sound, I don't really change the sample rate. Um, <clears throat> but I find with the S950 you can just generally get get your drums louder there's a really nice filter on there so you can you can filter out a bit of the high end of the drums you know and I'd go from the S950 into Logic so I'd record you know I'd set the tempos the same as the MPC and then I'd record the, the drums out and then I'd start looping them in there and sort of toying with the sample um, so for example say this was the loop playing in Logic, uh, the drum loop, I'd then come up with a pattern, you know, so uh, let's, for the sake of this video, say I, I came up with this idea. Yeah, say I came up with that pattern, I'd record that in over sort of four bars. Um, what I might be inclined to do is plug the MP into the SP and then record directly into Logic, maybe add an effect on the way in as I'm recording. Um, and once I have it arranged in Logic, I'll sort of <coughs> then try and switch it up. So I might go back to some of these chops and sort of change them, you know, uh, or go back to the record, find other bits to sort of incorporate into the beat, just to sort of switch it up a little, not not so it's, you know, just the same old loop, just, just playing over and over again. Um, but yeah, definitely, once it's in Logic, I can, I can sort of experiment a lot more um, with what I want to do, where I want to take the beat, add things like a bass line. I find the bass noises in Logic that I have made uh, are nice, you know, they're, they're a lot nicer than anything that I've been able to sort of make on, on the MP, that maybe that's something I need to work on. Um, but you know, in terms of like sub bass and things like that, it's quite good. I find Logic quite useful for that reason. Um, so yeah, my next step after sequencing out a pattern with the sample would be to add things like bass, um, maybe a shaker, work on the general mix of the beat, um, you know, get the levels matching a bit more. Um, and yeah, probably go back into the sample and find other bits that would work. Maybe take, uh, take, take another record and try and find some stuff. But yeah, I generally tend to, to, to sequence everything out live most of the time or or loop the drums, you know what I mean? So they're they're playing everything's playing live and uh yeah, so it's all predominantly all sequenced into logic and then I can sort of clear more space on here and add add more stuff as I go basically. So that would be a method that I would use to sort of go about making a beat. Sometimes um, I just, if I'm feeling lazy, I'll just use the SP. It's very quick to sort of work with. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how I go about making a beat.